All right, so we did uh, bones. Now let's talk about so the, the, uh, the shape of us and holds us up and does all that. Now let's talk about all the soft tissue, the part that moves our bones around. So where two bones come together, uh, it's called an articulation, right? So here's a bone, and this is just a made up bone. And here's another bone that's got kind of a cup and a trochanter. And where those two bones come together, right? We call that an articulation. And that's where the bones uh, meet and move. Meet and move. And it's um, M-E-E-T, meet. M-E-A-T, that's a different kind of meat. That's a word that means uh, like muscle, or you guys eat meat, you know. So uh, this articulation is woven together with some connective tissue, which is easy to remember. That's the stuff that, like, uh, connects the bones together. Now, how do I get those bones to move? Because they can swivel at their articulation. We've got these really cool things attached to them with some connective tissue at this end. And then there's a big chunk of this meat in the middle. And then there's another connective tissue at that end. This thing is called a muscle, right? The Latin would be a muscle which is uh, a word for mouse, right? So, because originally when um, the, the early anatomist looked at the muscles moving under the skin, it looked like a little mouse running around under the, the grass and leaves. So they called them a uh, muscle, little mouse. So you got this little bunch of meat, right? M-E-A-T, uh, where the bones meet, M-E-E-T, meet and move. And the two ends are connected by connective tissue to the bones. Muscle gets shorter when it contracts. So we're going to say that word, contract. That means to shorten, right? Contract means to get shorter. And when this muscle, the ends get shorter or pull in toward the middle, the two bones that they're connected to move together. That makes sense, right? And then to move the bones back open, I'd have another muscle over here attached to another bone so he could pull the joint back open that way, right? We'll call this one muscle number two, okay? Now here's a quick distinction between certain types of connective tissue. The connective tissue that holds the muscle to the bone, so this one, those are called tendons. The connective tissue that holds a bone to another bone, those are called ligaments. Right. And then you've heard of maybe somebody sprained an ankle or strained their back. So when you injure a ligament, that's called a sprain with a R, with a with a P. Sprain. I sprained my ankle means I hurt my ligaments in my ankle. If I strained my back with a T, strained my back, that means I hurt some of my tendons or muscles in my back, but not my ligaments. That's just a little thing to help you out there. So you know the difference between a strain, muscle tendon, or a sprain, ligament, joint capsule. Sometimes the ligaments that wrap around a joint all the way, like a sock, is called a capsule, but don't worry about that. So, muscles only work by shortening. They pull in the middle, which pulls on their tendons, and pulls the bones together. But now my bones are stuck. So I have to have other muscles on the other side to pull that bone open. All right, let me, let me grab my volunteer. All right, so my volunteer is gonna stand here. This Mrs. Mori is gonna help us out. So we're gonna put her arm up and we're gonna look at her muscles, okay? So this is her arm, this is her forearm. And then look over here. So she wants to look at her bracelet. She can bring it closer by pulling with this muscle. So when that muscle pulls, it shrinks this arm joint over here so she can look at it. See, look right here, right? Now that muscle is short, it's bunched up. That's called her biceps because it has two heads. Biceps brachium. Now, now she's stuck. This is how she lives. This is how she lives her life because the bones have moved together and muscles can't push. So that muscle can't go and push it back open. So she has another muscle on the back of her arm. Let's turn you around called the triceps brachii, and then when that one contracts, go ahead and straighten that out, 
That one contracts, it pulls the arm muscle back open. So she can do that all day. Bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, sorry, turn. Just like that, bicep, tricep, push against me, bicep, tricep. Now, besides just folding her elbow, if I hold her arm, she can pull, contract again, pull hard, pull hard. And then even with a lot of strength, she can move me. Or if I'm holding her like this, she can push with her tricep and that strains her elbow against the resistance. So the more force you can generate, thank you. The more force you can generate, oh, you can take it out, that's cool. <laughs> the more force you can generate by pulling, that's what we say, that's how we say we're strong. If you want your muscles to be stronger, able to contract against resistance, then you practice lifting a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier, until when my muscle contracts and not only moves just my forearm, but I could hold something heavy in the end of my arm and I could move and bring it all the way up. Then I have muscles in my shoulder, so I can, bring my, I can fold my elbow and then bring my shoulder up and then bring it into the inside with the big muscle on the front and then take a bite. Arr! like an apple or a skull. That was a bad demonstration. But that's how you move around and eat. I pick something up and I use the muscles to move all the little joints. My fingers, my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder, and then I can drink or eat or feed myself or uh, comb my beard right? or scratch my nose or itch my back or tie my shoes. So all those little movements you make work because your muscles get shorter and pull two bones together around an articulation where they meet and move. Now, it gets pretty complicated because you have 634 muscles moving stuff around and they have to be coordinated. They have to work at the same time, right? What if I went to um, bend my elbow to get my food closer, but then my shoulder extended? So if I, instead of doing this, right, shoulder and arm all coming up, I did this and my food was back here. Right? So you have to coordinate all that. That's going to be the job of your brain and your nervous system. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But right now, we just have to know how muscles work, basically. Now, what makes them get smaller or contract? Inside, there's a, there are a, a series of little interconnections between your nerve and the muscle, the meat. And when a little electrical signal gets there, it tells the muscle to get shorter. Now when the muscle on the other side of my arm, my tricep, wants to contract to open it back up, this one has to relax. So there's another signal that tells this one to get shorter and the one on the other side of the joint that would oppose that movement to relax. So I can move my arm out. Now when I need to bring my arm closer, this muscle has to relax so I can bring my arm closer. And then to twist and swing my arms around and right and pat my my stomach and rub my head or whatever i'm doing to coordinate all that is very complicated um and the amount of force right so when i bring my elbow over to scratch my nose i don't do it 100 percent, right scratch my nose like that i can do it real soft right or i can i can uh i can scratch my head real easy or i can itch really gentle or i can pick an egg up really careful so not only do you have to know which muscles to move at the right time, you have to know how much force to use, right? To coordinate that. So that's a little beyond this program, but that's basically how muscles work. There's 634 of them bad boys. And I will, um, instead of naming them all, I will just refer you to a chart because uh, the, the 632, uh, 634 of them. So um, let's move on to the next section uh, with coordination and control. We'll start talking about how your brain connects and moves all those muscles together and how it works. So I think that's it for this series. Uh, yeah, that's it. So off we go.